welcome back to my channel. Today we are sewing up baddies. This pattern has been around for a long, long time. It's one of my fall staples. I wear this constantly in the fall and winter. Events, football practice, around the house. It's just my go-to sweater because it's so comfortable and it's pretty cozy too. The G&G &G pattern group is in the middle of testing this one for me so that I can update it to our new size chart. They're doing a great job. This pattern sometimes is a little hard to love at first. I think it's just because in PDFs in general, 90% of PDF patterns are knit patterns and 90% of those knit patterns are fitted patterns. So so loose fitting patterns are really really hard for me sometimes to get through testing just because the fit is really really wide across the bust it has a wide neckline and it's not even fitted at the hem either there is nothing fitted about this pattern at all except the cute cuffs so if you like to sew fitted tops and fitted dresses sometimes going to this style at first you might think it's not for you and if batty is not your number one pattern that's okay not every style is for everyone but if you want to give it a try or if you're testing this for me in my group and you want to sew along with me today i'm going to show you two ways to do it one as it's written in the pattern and i'm also going to walk you through a cardigan hack because who doesn't love a cardigan? So follow along in the video while I show you how to make some basic baddies. Okay, so once you get your pieces cut out, you should have a pile like this. The most important thing when cutting is to make sure that one neckline is cut on the front line and one neckline is cut on the back neckline. Um, the bands and the neck band, you will cut with the stretch going this way so that they're stretchy in the right spots um, I just want to show you the cool inside of this fabric with the wrong side I can't decide if I'm going to make the cuffs and the neckband on the right side or the wrong side because the wrong side looks so cool but since this is kind of a busy sweater I might just go with the right side so here are all of your pieces cut out if you have an issue with how wide the fabric is I had to design it this way to get this bat wing top so I did design it so that it all fit on less than 30 inches on the fold so you can use 60 inch fabric however some fabric is only 58 inches or 56 inches and if you have an issue with that you can go ahead and cut these a little shorter cut the sleeve a little shorter and then when you go to cut your um, cuffs you can cut those a little longer and that should make up for the difference in the length like i said this is an oversized sweater there's enough give in these sleeves so the first thing we're going to do is place our front and back pieces right sides together and then we're going to do um, a lot of stitching right off the bat we're going to sew all along this shoulder edge here down the arm and then we're also going to sew from the underarm to this point and then down the side on both sides. Don't forget to finish your seams. Okay, so now that our seams are sewn on the inside, we can turn it right side out and your sweater should look like this. We are now going to focus on the part that trips people up if this pattern could trip someone up because if you're not reading along and you're trying to construct this pattern like a typical knit pattern with cuffs or bands um, this edge of the arm must be gathered I've already gotten a few emails about how the cuffs aren't wide enough and they can't stretch them as far as this but you're not supposed to you need to gather this whole edge right here so we're gonna run a basting stitch along this and pull the bobbin thread so we can gather this up and it will match the cuff who wants to see the lazy way I gather? A quick trick to gathering, which I like to use because it's the lazy way and sometimes I'm lazy. I want to set my tension to a plus two. And when I go to my stitch length, we're using a straight stitch and we're gonna bump it up to a four. That way the tension is really high and as we sew, I'm going to forward and back stitch 
And as you sew it, it should be gathering in the back. So you can see how it's kind of pleating the fabric. So when you're finished, your arm opening for your cuff to be added will be perfectly gathered all the way around. You may have to um, adjust your settings a little bit to get it to be that perfect two to one ratio. This is just a really easy and quick way to add gathering. Now we're going to sew our sleeve cuffs. So we're going to fold them widthwise, and um, that's right sides together. And we're going to sew up the very long side on the raw, raw edge side. So another trick that I'm going to add to this tutorial is you can just easily fold this one over or fold both of them over I mean and you can then sew just this edge and it'll turn around perfectly like I'll show you both ways of doing it and this way is definitely easier. So why didn't you just write it that way Christy? So the sleeve cuff that you sewed if you sewed it with the long side when you turn it right side out you're going to want to make sure that you keep this seam lined up with the seam on the other end so when you turn it right sides out they stay together and then line up the rest of the raw edges along here so when you have it turned right side out, you have this cuff where the top's nice and even. But if you sewed it with the fabric flipped up, like I showed you earlier, if you just open one side, it doesn't matter if it's this side or this side, but if you just flip it out, everything's already lined up on the inside and it's just a little bit quicker. So now we're going to attach the cuff to the sweater and we're going to make sure that the seam is on the underarm seam of the sweater. So I already went ahead and marked that with a clip so that we can tell while we're pinning. So we're gonna take our cuff and we're going to slide it over the sleeve with the finished edge first. So we're going to slide that through and then we're going to go ahead and pin this seam on the cuff to the underarm seam of the shirt and then we're going to continue pinning the gathers inside of the cuff all the way around it and then once you're done with that you can go ahead and sew those gathers into place and that should finish your sleeve. So once you have sewn all the way around the arm opening, you'll see the gathers on the inside. Then you just have to pull the cuff out. And now there's a perfectly gathered sleeve. Are you guys sick of me yet? I just pulled that out of there like it was magic. I am magic. So the next step is finishing our neckline. And I've already marked the neckline into quarters with one at the front, one at the back, and then these two were halfway between. And then you're going to take your neckband piece, you're going to fold it in half, right sides together, and you're going to sew down the raw edge side. While I'm editing, I just realized that the next two video clips that I took didn't record. So to remedy this situation, I'm going to add the neckband and hemming instructions from my drama dress sew along into this video. I apologize. Technology hates me today. Fold your neckband wrong sides together. Here's the fold and mark it into quarters starting with the seam. Now match up the four pins all around the neckline and make sure that the seam on your neckband is at the back center of the neckline. So all the way around, stretching the neckband slightly as you go. Almost done. We're going to hem the bottom and fold back a half an inch 
fold it another half an inch, and then we're gonna clip it in place, and we'll do that all along the bottom of the tee, and then you'll sew an eighth of an inch away from this fold. Okay, so now that we're done with our basic baddies, I'm gonna show you how we can hack this thing into a cardigan. And it's the coziest cardigan ever. It's so much fun and it doesn't take that many more steps. Here we go. For the cardigan baddie, we're going to cut the back piece the same way we did earlier on the fold with the back neckline. And for this one, I'm doing high-low. So when I cut the back, I'm going to use this high-low back cut line. So now whenever we're going to cut the front piece, Instead of cutting it on the fold, we're gonna move it off of the fold and we're gonna cut all the way around it and make sure that you use the front cut line at the neck and then you're going to use this front cut line at the high-low hem. So whenever you're done, you should have actually two front pieces instead of one. Okay, so now that the front is cut out, we need to modify the front edge so see how the neckline comes down to a point right here? We're basically just going to cut off that point and you can do that just by cutting a gradual curve from this point down. Um, if there's really no right or wrong way to do it, you can start down here and make the gradual curve or you can make it end right here. It's just any way that you want your front to look after we add the bands or after you hem it. So I started about halfway between the neckline and the hemline and I just swooped it up so whenever you are done cutting it, it should look like this. I also went ahead and did the same thing at the hemline starting where my point was in the front and going across to the side seam. So your front piece should now look something like this if you can leave the squares there and just round it off a little bit, but it will need a little bit of maneuvering to get the band around it. So there are two ways to finish the cardigan along the raw edge when you're done sewing it. One is to straight hem it. So if you're going to hem it, you just need to cut out your sleeve cuffs and you're ready to sew. Some people feel that makes it too wide at the shoulders, but that's the easiest way to go. The other way is to add a band. I'm gonna show you now how to calculate your band so you have everything ready to go once we get to that step. So to calculate our band width, we're going to measure along your front piece that you just cut all the way down to the side seam. So take that measurement and write it down and then you'll also need to measure this length along the back edge of your um, batty piece. And then you will also need to measure this length along the hemline. If you use this one for the cardigan, then use this one. But if you are doing the high-low, you need to measure this. So when I did my calculations, I got 55 inches, give or take. And I multiplied that, since we want it to stretch a little bit around it, but not a ton, I multiplied that by 0.925, which is what I most of the time um, calculate for sweater knit when I don't want it to stretch fully. And I got something like 50 point something. So I rounded it to 51 inches. This is not an exact science, clearly. So I'm going to take 51 inches and then I'm gonna cut the fabric band 5.5 inches long so that it ends up to be two and a half inches wide, which I think is pretty generous for a cardigan band. And we're gonna cut two of those since we only measured for half of the cardigan. So here are all of your pieces cut out. This is the back piece, which is cut on the fold. Your adjusted front piece that is two mirrored cuts you'll have two cuff bands for the sleeves and then you'll have two hem bands for the cardigan that are what we just calculated if you're hemming you do not need these bands but you still do need the sleeve cuffs so the first step we're going to do is same as the first step in this video and we're going to sew the shoulder seams and the underarm and side seams 
right sides together, but instead of having the front piece cut on the fold, we now have two front pieces that lay right next to each other. Now we're gonna turn our cardigan right side out and you'll see that it's looking like a cardigan. So now we are going to finish the sleeves the exact same way that we did earlier in the video. Now we're gonna place the two hem bands right sides together like this and we're gonna sew down this short side and this short side on the other end. Now you have one long strip that you're going to fold in half just like we did on the neck band. And you're going to create like a skinny cuff all along this hem band. So now you're gonna place your cardigan with the back side up. And this is the front over here, the front piece is over here and over here and the sleeves are just kind of set out in the middle and you're going to take your band and one seam will be placed at the back hem in the center and the other seam will be placed up here at the neckline at the center and then you're going to pin the band all the way around stretching it evenly um, and at the neckline you're going to want to stretch it just a smidge more than normal just so that it lays nicer. If you forget and you don't stretch it as much, it is not going to ruin it, it will be just fine. But it's just a small tip to stretch it a little bit around the back neckline just so that it lays nicer. And then you're going to sew all the way around the entire cardigan and you're done. Here's my finished cardigan. So a lot of people feel like the cardigan is a good alternative to just a straight body, especially people who have broad shoulders or who have a larger bust because it just breaks up the front of it and that way they can wear a fitted top underneath and there's not so much fabric out in front. There's just so much you can do with this pattern. If it's too long, you can shorten it. If it's too loose, you can always put it on inside out and you can pin where you want to sew it and then that way you can take it in as much as you want you can add a band to the bottom if you do want more fitted at the hips and i'm also going to plug bonnaroo while we're at it the cardigan looks really cute with the bonnaroo tank with the ties on the shoulders they're just both super easy sews that give a really awesome effect when they're finished so i hope everyone enjoyed this baddie tutorial today i'm going to go ahead and link Everything that I'm wearing in the description. All the fabric is from Sincerely Riley. The black polka dot fabric is $1 a yard fabric I found at Walmart. I'm going to pop some finished photos in at the end of the video. Some old baddies that I made and some cardigan combos just for inspiration. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and make sure you're following G&G &G on all of our social media to stay up to date on the upcoming baddie re-release. And as always, thanks for watching and sewing along with me today, and I can't wait to do it again next Thursday. Bye!